All right, short, simple video. How do you SSH to your Synology NAS from a Mac? MacBook, MacBook Pro, your desktop, your iMac, your Mac Pro, connecting to the back end of your Synology NAS. Now, of course, if you're familiar with the Synology NAS, you've got your front end. You've got the beautiful DSM interface. We can log in and you can install apps and play around with all of your data. But then behind that, it's actually running Linux. And you can actually SSH and access the command line of your Synology NAS. I release videos every week on all things tech, including the Synology NAS. So why don't you click on that subscription button on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Now, what you're gonna need for this video, you're gonna need three things. One, a Synology NAS. Obviously, that Synology NAS needs to be connected to the network, needs to be connected and accessible on the network it needs to be accessible via your computer, which is gonna be a Mac. The second thing is you need to be an administrator on your Synology NAS. You need to make sure that you've got the permissions to be able to log into your Synology NAS and actually enable the SSH ports so that you can actually SSH into your Synology NAS. And the third thing, of course, is you need a Mac. A Mac that can actually access that Synology NAS. And then number four is a bonus. You need to really know what you're doing uh, because you're accessing the code, the, the, the underlying operating system, the code, the CLI, the command line of your Synology NAS. If you are not careful, you could mess things up really, really badly. You've actually got a lot more access to change certain settings and certain things than when you access it via the GUI, via that DSM, via a web browser, right? You can do a lot more in the back end, but if you do things incorrectly, you could actually mess things up very, very bad for you. Oh, and also one more small quick thing. If you love the Synology NAS, like I love the Synology NAS, I've got a full length training course available to become an expert, a full administrator of the Synology NAS. I'm sure you don't know everything about the Synology NAS, so if you check out this course in the link down below in the description of this video, go check out that course. You will not regret it and you'll become a better admin managing your Synology NAS. All right, let's now log into our Mac and then we're gonna show you how to SSH directly into our Synology NAS. First things first, you need to enable SSH on your ESXi host. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into the little start menu thing over here and select control panel. Over here, we've got this area called terminal and SNMP under connectivity. We're gonna select that and you're gonna enable the SSH service. You can also enable Telnet if you wanna use Telnet, but I generally don't recommend it because it's not really um, encrypted and stuff. You can look at some advanced settings. You can change the security level of the encryption, encryption algorithm. You can make it higher high, medium, low, you can customize it as well, which is really, really nice. So if you're doing this in a corporate environment, you may want to look at changing that to a relevant uh, setting for you. It is strongly recommended that a strong password for login accounts be enabled, okay? Because people are gonna to try to SSH, especially if your NAS is uh, accessible on the internet, which I generally do not recommend, do not expose it out to the internet anyway, but you're gonna get a lot of attempts because everyone's gonna to try to attempt on this port 22, which is the SSH port, to try to log in over and over and over and over again. So it's generally a strong passer to be enabled and you can also do an auto block on a certain amount of uh, re-attempts before it blocks that access, for example. So you can set that if you so need to, but generally something strong and leave your NAS only accessible internally is generally the uh, recommendation. As long as that's enabled, you can select apply and okay. Now you've got to go and open up your terminal on your Mac. From your Mac, under the applications area, you're going to scroll down to the very bottom, you open up utilities, and there you have terminal. You can access it from a different area as well, but terminal is right there. You can go to the spotlight if you need to also. We now know the IP address of my Synology NAS is 172.16.1.49. You're going to need to know that IP address to be able to do this. If you've given your NAS a nice host name, and it says you know, like Synology NAS.com or whatever it may be, you wanna make sure that that is what you're connecting into. What we're gonna do in here is under our terminal, we're gonna type in SSH. So SSH and then space, and then a relevant administrator on that Synology NAS. So who is the administrator on that Synology NAS? That is the account that you need. You need one that has the highest privilege possible. If you're using one that does not have the privilege, it will not allow you to get in. So you need to make sure that you're using one that is full root administrative privileges enabled onto it. And there's my user. And then I'm gonna do an at symbol. And now the IP address of my Synology NAS. Okay, so SSH being, I'm gonna log into SSH. ED Aguero being my root user. And then at 172.16.1.49, I'm gonna press enter. 
What is the password? Of course, this is your long complex administrator password. And there you have it. There we are inside. We are now logged in. If it's all green and it looks such as this, you have logged in successfully. If this has failed, if it's red, if it says it cannot log in, check the permissions. Make sure that the user has the right permissions to be able to do this. Make sure that SSH is turned on. If it's not, return it on. Maybe reboot your NAS as well, but that generally is what you should need. You can then go in and start navigating through your Synology NAS and doing what you need to do. Now, when you're not using it, you can then log out of here and then you're gonna turn SSH off. It's always good to have SSH not turned on when you're not using it. So as I said at the very start of this video, do this with a lot of caution. You don't wanna be messing things up by logging into your backend and then putting in some commands, even by accident, and then messing things up really, really badly, and you could lose data and that sort of thing. So just be aware before you go and do that. There you have it. Thanks for checking this video out. Do the like, comment, subscribe thing. Stay tuned for the next video as well as we continue to talk about all things tech.